Well, as a starting point, you're correct that 85% of our portfolio is now future-facing commodities, and that's not an accident. That's deliberate, it's intentional. Uh, we've repositioned our portfolio fundamentally to align to three of the, in my view anyways, biggest structural trends of the next decade or decades, which are a trend towards production of renewable energy, a need to invest massively in grid infrastructure and power distribution networks, and three, a huge demand for commodities that's expected to come from energy storage, EVs, you know, you name it. So we, the business is positioned um, straight down the fairway with those trends. The vast amount of infrastructure capital spending you need to invest in in order to uh, obviously create these new facilities as well. Is um, the scarcity of supply going to keep prices in the underlying products high and hence justify uh, the return on capital or the capital invested as well? Or actually, do you have concerns that because of all these amazing trends you talk about as well, including energy storage and grids and what have you, the fact is there's going to be a lot of supply coming onto the market and that's going to douse uh, the prices? Well, looking at the supply growth today, you know, it's, it's a pretty bleak picture. Um, the reality is, if you estimate, you, when you try to quantify, you know, how just how much metal we need to achieve the net zero energy transition, it's mind boggling. Um, you need, some folks estimate you need four to five times the amount of copper produced in the next 15 years that the entire produce world produced last year. Um, so the commodity su supply growth just isn't there. We're not seeing capital investment. And in part, that's a function of or challenging um, um, just the challenges associated with bringing a mining project online, but also the commodity price environment that we see today. So logically, if you see this through, the only way that a lot of this new supply gets built is if incentive pricing reacts, which bodes very well for future higher commodity prices. Mark, I want to bring in the, the major players then because we went through this huge phase of balance sheet consolidation that the, the core focus really was on big long life assets that were low cost and lack of investment in the future as you're pointing out. What happens next though as you, you have a business that is very much geared around development and producing? Do big players start to swoop on businesses like yours in future where already you've spent the money in developing a lot of these projects? Well, first of all, Accor is a royalty and streaming company, which is very different to a mining company. Accor generates its revenue as a percentage linked to the mines run by mining companies. So as a royalty and streaming company, we don't have any mining operations. We're more of a finance provider. Um, and therefore we have very low, ask, low fixed, fixed costs. We don't, have, we don't invest in capital deployment to, you know, the capital costs of the mine are, are not ours. We don't have operating costs to run the mine. We're linked to the revenue of an underlying mining operation, which means we're a low beta, low vol uh, way to get exposure to the mining sector. Now, in terms of the mining companies themselves, we don't really see ourselves as being um, of interest to a mining company because we don't like, we have financial investments in mining operations but we don't own the underlying mines uh, but you do raise an interesting point which is i mean we're coming off a decade of the lowest investment um a very very low investment into the mining sector and we're going into the next decade or two of incredible demand growth so the the pieces are really set for a really interesting dynamic in terms of commodity prices